That little girl isn't all that she seems to be. To go from extreme nothing to extreme everything, all in one jump, it could be difficult for anyone. Oh dear, <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. The brand new MG ZSCV, it's one of the most affordable electric vehicles currently on the market. But is it any good? Should you care? Well, let's find out, shall we? MG, proceed. So welcome to yet another episode of Tweed Jacket Reviews. Today I'm very privileged to be um, in Hertfordshire. Um, we're in that area of the country that is known by people like me as Avengerland because uh, it's where the Avengers and other series of the 60s, 70s and 80s were filmed. And we're driving this wonderful 2019 MG ZS EV exclusive. Behind the camera is uh, Mr. Matt Richardson from Furious Driving. And uh, this car actually is not um, an MG press car. It was actually purchased by the first person in the country to ever buy an MG ZS CV, which is my friend Richard Jackson. So thanks, Mr. Jackson. Faxon. Before we get into um, more detail about um, the wonderful MG ZS CV, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, uh, to like this video, and to leave a comment below. It really helps out um, to allow us to make more of these wonderful reviews. So the MG ZS CV has really only been on the market for a, less than a month actually. So at the time of recording this video, which is late October 2019, there are about four or five cars that are actually in customers' hands. The ones you would have seen on, on most of the reviews that people have done were part of the MG press fleet and their pre-production cars. I was privileged um, myself to be at the press launch of these cars in July 2019 where I was a guest of the Planet Auto YouTube channel and uh, they recently actually had one of these cars on, um, on loan from MG where they did a lot of videos on it and got a lot of um, information about day-to-day -day use of these. Obviously uh, Mr Jackson's given me even more information so I hope I'll be able to give you a sort of considered opinion about how this stuff all works. Um, it's a very smooth car to drive, it's the first impression you get and I do remember driving through you know, places like Hampstead and Highgate when I was on the, on the press launch um, and just how smooth and um, easy it was to drive. It's very easy to get up to very illegal speeds in this car really without even thinking about it. The motor which is in the Z MG ZS EV is a 143 horsepower electric motor with a single speed transmission and um, the battery is 44.5 kilowatt hours. Now um, the WLTP range of this car is somewhere about 163 miles although having set off this morning with a full charge it's saying 180 and actually if you could drive this car in town it would be around 230 miles in ideal situations. Now obviously it's late October the weather's not the best I'd say at the moment and um, you know you're not probably going to get 230 miles um, with weather like this but you know you get pretty close if you were very 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 sluggish and you were driving it in economy mode all the time which is what I'm doing. If you uh, were to charge this car from a home socket, um, a so-called granny charger, it would take you about 24 hours, so probably not recommended. Um, one of the things that um, you can do is obviously get a Type 2 charger installed at your house, and the first thousand customers, like Mr. Jackson, um, were offered this option, and that will allow you to charge at seven kilowatts, and um, the car will then charge in around 11 hours. 
if you go to a rapid charger and this car will accept up to 85 kilowatts of rapid charging um, although in practice when I tried one Planet Auto um, that one only was for about 45.5 um, that might charge actually just over an hour which is pretty good I think one of the main things that um, I've noticed about this car um, it just how smooth the ride is. I noticed that going over speed bumps in, in, in London on the press launch and I noticed it again today because uh, Swanland Road which is uh, right next to the A1 um, near South Mems is, is pretty, um, it's pretty potmarked actually. It's, um, it's a little bit on the um, it's a little bit on the rough side, um, but the ride is so smooth and compliant. It's almost like the car's got air suspension, but of course it hasn't, but it feels like it. One, di one disadvantage of this though is that if you're driving along and expecting it to be like an MG sports car, then you're sadly going to be disappointed because if we go round um, at roundabout with any degree of gusto, and of course um, that's what happens when Planet Auto drive their cars, um, then you're just going to be met with a huge amount of body lean. So when we cut to this roundabout here at South Mems, we're just going to go nice and gently round. But you know, this sort of car is not aimed particularly at um, the sporty driver. It's more aimed at um, the um, family man, Mr. Jackson. He is a family man, and we've got uh, his daughter's car sitting in the back of us today, just to show that actually that is what most people who buy these cars will be doing. Um, then, if you slow down a bit, you drive in economy mode or normal mode, then it will be absolutely fine. It won't really be a problem. It's just if you, you know, use all the power and you go into sport mode, will you actually have any kind of difficulty driving this car? Right, we're going to do 0-60 time. I'm in sport mode, so go. Oh my gosh. 100%, 30, 40, 50, 60. The official 0-60 time of this car is, um, about eight and a half seconds and I can fully believe it. I'm going to put that back into economy mode. Um, the suspension of this car being what it is and being a bit soft meant that we were kind of pinned right back into our seats there and it, um, I think I gave that a fair chance I could given the fact that, you know, weather's a bit iffy today. Um, but that was a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed that. I'm not sure about my passengers though. Uh, so yes, it is possible to have a lot of fun in an MGZ-CV and possible to drive it very, very quickly indeed. Unlike on a BMW i3, and um, Mr Jackson also has a BMW i3 Rage Extender, which I reviewed um, last year, not, not that any of you have watched that, uh, by the way, um, there is a button here which is marked KERS which allows you to change the level of regenerative braking um, in this car and I have it on maximum, I've got it on level 3 and that is actually how uh, Mr Jackson and his lady wife drive the car normally because on an i3 there is regenerative braking but it's only the fiercest type that you can get. Um, to me this seems <laughs> plenty fierce enough in, in level 3 um, but it's not exactly the same as say the e-pedal system on the Nissan Leaf. Um, it's not as fast, it's not, it's not as fierce as that, but um, it will allow you in many situations to, to not use a brake at all. So we're coming up to a roundabout here, um, signaling left, and I don't need to use the brakes at all. Straight through, just using one pedal to drive. Now you, you do have to be aware of the fact that the regenerative braking will only activate the brake lights in mode 3. So if you're using it in 1 or 2 and you're slowing down, you've got to be aware of the fact that people behind you might get a bit confused as to what you're doing. Um, just a sort of quirk of the car, I suppose. In terms of pricing, this is one of the areas where this car really excels. Now, um, when this car was launched, the first thousand customers, as I've mentioned, got a home charging unit, a 7 kilowatt um, Type 2 home charging unit. And um, the launch price of the Excite trim level, this is an exclusive, um, was £21,500. Now, some of that was made up with the £3,500 government plug-in car grant. Um, MG actually then matched that as well, so the total discount was £7,000 to the first people who ordered Excite. Not that many people do, because if you look at monthly finance deals, 
you'll find that there's a £20 gap per month between an excited and exclusive. And the exclusive, bear in mind we've got absolutely everything you could possibly ever want, with one or two exceptions, on this car. We've got heated seats, electric seats, um, power folding mirrors, a panoramic sunroof. Um, we've got this lovely leather interior, we've got blind spot monitoring, we've got um, traffic jam assist, we've got um, cycle this detection, pedestrian detection, um, thing called MG Pilot which combines um, autonomous emergency braking with lane keeping assist and lane departure warning. We've got, we've got um, active cruise control in this car as well, um, rear reversing camera, um, absolutely everything you could possibly ever want. Probably one major omission to this car is the fact that you can't order any ZS, electric or petrol, with front parking sensors, which I think is a bit of a shame because there's so much other technology on this car um, that um, is sort of cutting edge that uh, you know you really want that. For the actual pricing of um, a ZSC V exclusive, it's about £2,000 more than um, the Excite version. This particular car was about £24,000 because of the um, tricoat metallic paint. This is a dynamic red um, and uh, one or two other things such as a spare wheel and some mat. But if you were to order one today and you didn't mind about metallic paint, so you got one in white or black, um, then it is 23 and a half. Um, the government grant is 3,500 and MG then actually um, match that, so it's £7,000 discount. If you order an, an Excite now though, um, the government grant is actually only th is still there, but it's only a £3,000 discount that MG offer you. I, I contacted um, Summit at MG Garage, which is in Dudley, and asked them about your typical finance prices for somebody, because most of these cars are bought on finance. It's, you know, it's a, it's a modern SUV, obviously. And um, if you want a, an ex say, exclusive like this, um, we're now in the sort of two to three thousand pounds in terms of orders. So not two to three thousand pounds, two to three thousand customers in terms of orders, um, where MG are still offering their grant then you're looking at £299 a month for this particular car. Um, the deposit of that is £3,040 or 46p. Um, and this is on a PCP deal, so it's over four years um, out of a 4.9% APR um, with an 8,000 um, annual mileage limit. Uh, the balloon payment is just over £9,000. Now, if you look at, say, I don't know, a cash car or something like that, which is similar in size to this car in terms of the interior space, actually the boot's a bit smaller in a cash car than this, then you'll find it very competitively priced indeed. Um, that is one of the things that MG have really revolutionised the market by doing this. I mean, if you if you were to look at, say, I, I don't know, Hyundai Kona EV, um, which is a lot more expensive because they've discontinued the lower power version, um, or the Kia Nero, um, Kia e Nero, then those are both a lot more expensive. You get better range and a few more toys to play with, but um, this MG has a seven year warranty, both on the battery and the car, which is, is pretty nice. Do bear in mind though, it's only 80,000 miles. Although, uh, if you were to try to, to spec um, one of these to the uh, same level as, as an exclusive, then you'd be paying around £33,000 for Kiri Nero and you'd have to wait something like um, a year or more. Now I think that um, from the sort of current state of things that I've, I've been told by, by MG, by MG dealers, that you can probably, if you order one right now, you can get one in about three to four months, which is a lot less than 12. Not my mouse is any good particularly. There's a dramatic um, pressing of the park switch here because it's got an automatic handbrake and it's an electric car, so uh, yeah, that's uh, as much as I could do. Anyway, um, this car is so easy to drive, it's so smooth, um, it doesn't require any effort really at all. Um, this is a feature of motoring that's going to be 
an incredibly stress-free one. Anyway, uh, let's look at this uh, car's more practical side now and have a look in the boot. If I come round to the back, um, this car looks so similar to the one that I reviewed last month, it's uncanny. But as you can see, we've got an EV badge here. And you'll also notice on some of the cutaways that we've got different alloy wheels on here that are called the windmill design, or they are very similar to the ones normally found on a petrol exclusive. The capacity of the boot on this EV is actually the same as the petrol version, it's 448 litres. We've got the same dual height boot floor here, and if I lift this up, all the charging cables and things are underneath. This car actually came, if you can believe this, with an optional spare wheel, which I've never heard of an electric car before. Um, obviously most of the older ones had it, but this one is a modern one, and that's an unusual actually. Um, the Type 2 cable is in there um, for fast charging, and also the three-pin granny lead is in there. Um, there's still the same compartments on either side, which is very useful today. And I think it's an achievement that they've actually managed to get the same capacity out of the combustion engine car as the electric one. That's not the same as, say, on a Kia Nero or an E-Nero. They're about a little, little bit different, but this is exactly the same, which I think is very impressive. What you don't get, though, is an electric boot release like you do on the top model HS. One of the marvellous things about an MG ZS or rather this SUV version of the ZS, is just how much room there is in the back. It's very, very easy to get in and out. It's very easy to fold the seats, just like this. Now, if you have the seats in this, um, if your boot floor is up position here, you'll find a completely flat load floor, which is really good too. Although, as you, we can see there, the belt buckle doesn't actually clip it anywhere, so you'd have to sort that out. There's no armrest in the back of here, and then you can't get an armrest in any so that's just a pain. Although, what you can get in this um, exclusive model, the, the EV of course, is a USB charging port in the back. That is not available in a petrol model. What is the same though is the fact that we have this nice leverette seating and if I just sit back here I've got absolutely loads of headroom even with a panoramic roof. I'm 5 foot 11 for your reference and this is my driving position as well and you'll notice my knee room is extraordinarily generous and you can also put the feet underneath the seats. It's actually very comfortable in here for well long journeys. Um, so really there's not much to complain about apart from these hard plastic door tops just like the front. Um, and also the fact that there's no armrest, it's pretty good. Once you're inside um, the driver's seat of this car, it's actually incredibly comfortable. I've had to leave the car on because otherwise it will bong at me like no one's business. That's one of the things um, that will be in some kind of outtakes, maybe. Um, it is just the most annoying thing of just a minute of bonging and trying to get rid of it all. Um, I know one of the only other people who's actually got one of these as an individual as opposed to um, working for the MG um, press office department it's actually, has actually um, deactivated the bonging in a special way that I won't tell you about. But anyway, um, we've got so many different things in this interior. Here. We've got um, this touchscreen here, we've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, um, MG's iGo Navigation, we've got um, all the safety features in here, um, the traffic sound recognitions on the navigation, we've got this um, way here that you can change for different modes in the car, which actually also includes different modes for steering. I, uh, you know, it's a very overwhelming thing when you actually first come from say a conventional petrol engine car like a ZSE um, one litre automatic but actually it's pretty simple the interface in here is actually quite similar to that used on say an iPad or something like that and um, if you just go into the setup it's all pretty straightforward um, you can try to turn some of the bongs off in here um, you can go on a Bluetooth menu and pair your phone We've got obviously digital radio, which is which is here. The heater controls, though, mercifully are incredibly easy to operate. One thing that's different between this and say the new HS, um, love a bit of bong, don't you? One thing that's different between this and the new HS is that the controls are physical here; they're not in the touch screen. So if you just want to nip the temperature up or down, it's very easy. Um, this exclusive model also has heated seats, which are here. Unlike in a Prius, the switches are in the worst possible place I've ever seen, um, and everything feels quite robust. We've also got this quite nice material on the centre console. 
This is actually different entirely from the petrol automatic version. This rotary selector is completely different and the cup holders even are a different place. It's a very pleasant place to be indeed. One thing that um, the electric ZS has over the petrol counterpart is you can get blind spot monitoring in this top model and that's very useful. When I was driving um, in, in London that was uh, something that I very much used. We've also got a very nice raised drone position which means you can see the corners of the car quite easily. As I've said, you can't get parking sensors on any ZS, including the electric version on the front, which is very annoying. Um, I think they sh definitely should fit those, at least as an option. But you do have them on the back, on both the Excite and the Exclusive, and in this car, of course, you get a reversing camera. Um, be nice, perhaps, in the future to see a 360 camera, but I'm not going to complain too much about that. We've also got this uh, panoramic sunroof in this exclusive, which has a shade, and we've let it open at the moment to make the filming a little bit brighter, which uh, which is which is good because it is quite a dark day today. The um, car also has electric seat adjustment, which you can't get on a petrol-powered one, um, and that's pretty easy. One thing you don't get is um, reach adjustment for steering. Now, for my particular shape, I, I find this position really good. Um, obviously, your mileage might vary in that respect. Um, also, these are not climate controls. These are standard air conditioning controls, which I don't particularly mind. I don't particularly like climate control, but um, if that's something of a bother for you, then obviously you can look elsewhere. So I've got my secret mission documents here. They didn't fit in the glove box in the petrol ZS. Let's just try to see if they fit in this electric one. No. So uh, you're not going to be smuggling anything across the border, but of course you can put that in the door bin just there. For your um, Furious Driving travel mug, um, which uh, is available at the Furious Driving website, there is a, now a nice cup holder here um, on a petrol ZS because this is taken up with um, the manual gearbox or the automatic gearbox here. Um, you don't get so many spaces to store these, you get a space just there, which fits quite nicely. But you've actually got two cup holders here. I put the key in, in, into this particular one. Um, we've also got another thing that's different from the petrol ZS. There's two USB ports just down here and a 12 volt socket. Now you can't see them particularly easily um, but, but trust me they are here and um, the cable runs up nicely into here. Um, that's a USB-C cable that's just coming to the bottom there um, and that's good to see. That's one of the main complaints I did have in the petrol ZS. There was only one um, USB socket in the car. There's also another one in the back which is good. Um, the dashboard is still this nice squishy material. I think it's leatherette rather than actual leather. Um, the door plastics on here are hard just like they are in a petrol ZS but again given the price of the car I will forgive that. So if we take a look at the controls, um, one of the ways that you can tell that this is a production car and not a pre-production one is the fact that these stalks have blue buttons on the end. Isn't that nice? Um, there is a lever here for the cruise control. Um, in this car, this is an adaptive cruise control system as well. Um, automatic lights and wipers, which is very useful on a day like this. Um, same stalks as on MG3, funnily enough. Um, if you look in front of you, you notice the car doesn't have a full digital instrument cluster, which you'd expect to find perhaps on an electric car. But I quite like this because it's really easy to, to, to read at a glance. Um, if you use these buttons here you can go through all the systems and if you use the battery control down here you'll be able to see um, how long we've got to empty which is in this case 152 miles. The WLTP range of the car is 163 so it's not doing too badly. Um, press this KERS switch here that alters the regenerative braking and this mode selector goes from normal which we're in now to economy and sport which will also alter the weight of the steering. Um, the steering wheel itself is the same as on the face of the NG3 and the current ZS. I can't remember if this is the same as on an HS. I think it's similar. And that feels really nice. It's a nice leather wrapped one. Um, sort of reminiscent maybe of, of, of an Audi one, but I wouldn't know about that. Um, and then the controls for the mirror, it, it's a little bit interesting to have it there rather than on the door, but that's okay. Um, the switches down here and up there, they actually feel okay. Um, we're not talking about, say, Mercedes-Benz levels of build quality here, but I don't think it's too bad at all. Right then, what do I think of the MG ZS EV? 
Well, if you can live with these annoying bongs, this is a fantastic car. It's really well priced, it's very easy to drive, it has pretty much all the equipment that you want and this exclusive trim, and it's got a seven year warranty. I find it very difficult to criticize this actually, particularly as rivals can be anything up to 11,000 pounds more expensive. Oh, dear me, I'm terribly sorry. You see, on these Continental guitars, the wires are different. It's very easy to confuse them. They're not the same as they are in England. Thank you for watching this episode of Tweed Jacket Reviews. My name is Joseph Lloyd. I'm an independent vehicle consultant. I find cars for people. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to do that. Don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below. If you wish me to source a car for you, I'd love to do that. My website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. Please use the contact me page on my website to get in touch. I've got a Facebook page as well. It's facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Thank you. No. Okay. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Right, don't bong at me, please, 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 just... Blah. Right, okay, let's try... Right, let's... Right, it's not gonna bong... Shut up! Ah, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs>